Yeah. 
We worship you, Lord, O oh God, this morning. We glorify your name, Lord, oh my God. We say, Makanaka, Jesus, you are great, you are mighty. We are here in your presence, Lord, so that you can speak into our situations. We are here in your presence, Lord, so that you can speak unto us. Father, we just want to thank you. We thank you for your greatness. We thank you that you are mighty. You are great. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You are great, my King and my Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I just want to greet you all saints. Yes, the Bible actually speaks loud unto us that we should learn from the ends. Yes, and become wise. So tonight, uh, this morning, as we are in his presence, let's just open our hearts. Let's just open our minds as the ends and learn from the ends so that we can be wise. Hallelujah. Ends are a, a spiritual symbolical for us as saints that we need to know God, that we need to come with a heart that is a hunger and a thirst for him, a hunger for what he is to do for us, a hunger for the things that he is going to do. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, saints. In the same attitude of worship, it's a privilege and honor to have a son of this house, the one that is pregnant with the word of God. Can we clap our hands to God in reverence to God as the man of God comes to speak the oracles of God? Pastor David Simba, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Just as before we transit, let's just sing. Mm-hmm. 
just going to sing one more song and worship before we can take our seats. Amen. If you are able to stand up, just stand your feet. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Mm. And we will never Thank you, Jesus. And we know there's more
Father, this morning we just release your joy even into your congregation, O oh Lord. We are your people, O Lord. And Lord, it's only found in you, O oh God. Lord, this morning we thank you that you are God who is more than enough, O oh God. And so this morning we give you glory, we give you honor. We give you glory, we give you honor, Father, for what you have done for us, O oh God. Lord Jesus, we exalt you this morning. We magnify your name, O oh God. We say, Lord, take your glory, O oh God, even in this place, O oh God. Be magnified, O oh God, because it's in you and it's in you, Lord. We give you thanks, we give you honor, Father. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Auntie Beauty to pray for us, our Pastor Beauty, to pray for us as we hear the word this morning. Hallelujah. Um, let us close our eyes and pray. Father, in the Jesus. name of Jesus, we thank you this Jesus morning. We thank you for your goodness and your mercies that are new each and every day. Lord, my God, today we determine that we'll never settle for less, Father, for there is more that is found in you. You are in us and we are in you, Lord Jesus. Father, as we decrease, may you increase, oh Lord, my God. May your people, oh Father, hear your voice, almighty Jehovah God, as the word is going forth today from your servant, almighty Jehovah God. May May it begin to stir, may it begin to remind, may it begin to open doors, may it begin to break chains of bondage, almighty Jehovah God, that your people, O oh Father, have settled for, O oh Lord my God, which is not their portion today in the name of Jesus. So Lord, take your place, we enthrone you, O oh God, with many crowns, and we say, Jesus, be lifted up on high. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Good morning. It's a privilege to be able to share the word this morning. Amen. We want to appreciate the leadership. Um, Pastor Morgan, Mom Gloria. And of course, our apostles, Pastor Ken and Mom Bula. We want to acknowledge all the pastors, the leaders, and everybody. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. For those that are watching us on YouTube, YouTube and on Facebook, we welcome you as well this morning. The same impact of the word of God in the congregation this morning, we pray that it's going to impact you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. Amen. <laughs> is it cold? Amen. Amen. We are still going to share the word <laughs> in and out of season. Whether it's cold, whether it's hot, we will share the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank you for attending the service as well. Because then we would have preached to no one this morning. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I just want us to just close our eyes and as we begin the service this morning, as we share.
Amen. Amen. Phone call during the service. Anyone disturbed by that? Very unspiritual. How do you do that? In the house of God. Whose phone was ringing? <laughs> Please rise up. Ashes, make sure he's out of change. <laughs> anyway, iPhone draw. It's with my permission to do so. So what happened one time? This man came to church with his wife. And as he sat in church, during a very integral part of the service, his phone rang. His phone rang, and you know when you, your phone is ringing in church, you are trembling, you don't even know the button to cut, and the wife kept, and all those that were close to him frowning. and of course the ushers, they came, the ushers came with that frown on their faces, ready to reject him, and the pastor said, how dare you do this in the house of the Lord. How is, do you become so disrespectful of the house of the Lord? That guy put his tail between his legs and walked, walked off church. That was the last day that he was in church. Do you think he had planned that his phone becomes and he never came back to church. That same evening, he walked. Didn't want to talk to the wife. Because the wife was like, how dare you embarrass me? You know, women don't say much, aren't you? They just say Because women are given 10,000 words a day. And men 2,500. So you know the ratio. It's not like that at my house. <laughs> so the guy walks off from church and he's taking a walk because he cannot you know handle what's happening at home and they, when he was walking around he saw these flashy lights he just decided to walk in and it was a bar so he walks into a bar. Didn't even know what to drink. Didn't even know this is black label, this is blue label, this is black label. He just ordered beer. So when he ordered the glass, when he started drinking, he was still trembling. And guess what? That bottle fell and went into a gentleman who was close to him. And he was wet of beer. That guy stands up. Says, it's okay, mate. It's good on you, mate. It happens in a bar, you know? Yeah. And the bartender, she stood up from where she was, walked over to the guy, because the guy is so nervous, and he's thinking now another lesson. This woman just comes to him, says, it's okay. It will happen every time and again. Don't you worry about the broken bottle. Here is another one. And the other two will be for free. And the guy that he had poured beer on he was a big guy. And he just came and said, Mate, it's okay, man. It happens in the bar, man. All the other five are on me, mate. Do you know, guys, this is how we are as the church. But 
That's what we do to the people of God. Instead of loving them and caring for them. Because this is the hospital, ladies and gentlemen. For those that are hurting those that need God, this is the place where they need to be. The title of the message, beauty changed it, to never settle for less. Never settle for less. So what, so what we'll do, we'll just share for the next few minutes and in a teaching manner. And then later on, do some bit of preaching. Amen. Amen. It's about growing in God. Amen. You and I need to be growing in God. The reason why we chuck people out of church that way and we don't care is because me and you are not growing. We are in the same level that we were years back. But if we were growing in the Lord, we will take care of each and every person that comes into, into this church. Because this is supposed to be a healing house. This is supposed to be a place that people feel at home. But then they end up feeling at home elsewhere. I remember what my, my brother said to me in 1986. Most of you were born by then. <laughs> he said to me, the worst army is the army of the Lord. Because it shoots its own victims. It shoots its own that are injured. So what we're saying this morning is we want to grow in God. Amen. This year we are saying we want to grow in numbers. We are looking at 700 people more. But that will not happen if you and I don't grow up. That will not happen if you and I don't care for people. David became a warrior internally before he became a warrior outside. There were so many things that David had to learn as a shepherd boy before he went to the battle front. There were so many things that David needed to learn before he could kill the bear, before he could kill the lion, before he could face Goliath. If David went to Goliath without knowing who God was, he would have not slayed the giant. But by the time David went to face Goliath, he was able to say, who are you? Uncircumcised Philistines. Who are you that you can defy the armies of God? It's because David was great growing in the Lord. Amen. In Hebrews chapter 6 verse 11, the Bible says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Amen. Amen. Let us go on to maturity. God is desiring that we also go on to maturity. Amen. I'm sure even our spiritual fathers also end up getting worried. If they are preaching week in, week out. And they are finding us in the same position. Even parents themselves, they, they wonder when there is no growth in their children. So they they want us to grow in the spirit. They want us to grow in the things of the Lord. Hence the teaching, the sharing of the word of God that we receive each and every week. So let us leave aside those elementary things. Let us go on to maturity. So you and I, we need to grow up. We need to grow from complaining about everything. 
We need to grow from looking at others in a weird way. The lady that shared at our pastor's prayer in the morning, she mentioned about forgiveness. She spoke about how we can see a speck or rather a log in other people and ignoring the speck in our eyes. When we are mature, we don't see the specks in other people's in, in the logs in other people's eyes. We begin to care for the other people. We see those people as we see ourselves. So it's important that we grow from where we are so that we can care for the people of God. People of God, wherever they are, they get shouted at at work. They get shouted at at home. They get shouted in the streets. They get shouted and demeaned where they stay. They become useless. And they come to church on Sunday. And they cannot fit in because of you and I. But me and you, if we decide to grow, this becomes a heavenly place. This becomes a happy place. This becomes where everybody wants to be. This becomes a place of healing. This is where the river flows with the healing. Let, let me not be the reason why it stops because of the way I treat my brother because of the way I treat my sister I need to grow up there's two elements of growth one is the physical the other one is the spiritual the spiritual is how do we relate to God In, uh, if you look at uh, Luke 1 verse 18 the Bible says and the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the desert till the day of his showing unto Jesus, unto Israel. Amen. Amen. That is the spiritual aspect. <inaudible> the physical part is how do we relate to men? First Samuel chapter 2 verse 26. And the child Samuel grew on and was in favor both with God and with men. And Samuel was in favor with God and with Men. So even socially, there needs to be some growth as well. Amen. Not, not only spiritually. Where we live with Amakelwanas of ours. Where we work. Those are our neighbors. How do they look at us? How do they look at us? Do we add any value into their lives? Do we make, do we make them feel like wanting God? before we have even preached Do these people want God because of what we have? I remember one time somebody mentioned they said, if you are saying this guy is a Christian, I would rather go to hell. Do you want people to speak that of you? That if you are a Christian, I would rather go to hell. It's very important how we treat people. It's very, very important how we attend to people. Amen. So as I was saying, that we are basically looking at our spiritual growth. Amen. Amen. There is a need to be a well-balanced life. Some, some of the notes that I, I took out here are from our book, which is called The Fundamentals of Faith. So it's not like I'm, I'm coming with some great revelation. I'm just speaking the simple, straightforward word of God. Nothing cunning, nothing too out of this world. But just the simple word of God. Amen. Wisdom has to do with your mentality. So you can just oppose those, hey? Wisdom is your mentality. 
you see, there's, there's difference between intelligence and wisdom. Intelligence will give you 50 degrees. Wisdom will win you men to yourself. Amen. Amen. Wisdom will qualify you to heaven. Amen. Amen. So there's a big difference. Yes, you can, you can be intelligent. But if you are not wise, you need some growing up to do. So stature is a physical attribute. Favor with God is spiritual. Favor with men is social. Pastor Morgan is going like this. Because he knows it's in the fundamental. <laughs> so not saying, aren't you? <laughs> Amen. Amen. So growth or maturity will help you to pick your fights. Hallelujah. Growth or maturity will help you to know to engage into that or not to do that. You know, there are some things that don't need you. You need to just keep quiet. You need to pick your fights carefully. Do you know, I, I'm sure David had so many people who derived him. <laughs> but these were small fish. This is not what David was interested in. David knew there was a Goliath. So what these other small boys were saying didn't mean anything to David. He had better battles to fight. There were Goliaths. There was the bear. There was the lion. So he knew how to pick up his phone. So it's the same with you as well. You need to know what to say to other people. But when you are growing and you are maturing, you begin to realize that that one is at a boiling point right now. Let me keep quiet. This one, no. we are at the same level. Let me engage. Let me talk to them. That's what maturity is. This one is hurting. It's going through a difficult time. Let me allow them to heal a bit. Then I can be able to engage. Amen. Amen. That's what maturity is. You pick up your fights nicely. You, you, you pick your words. You pick your attitudes. You meet someone, they are going through a tough time. They, they have lost a loved one. And you think they are mad at you or you think they are angry at you because they are quiet. You start having a go at them. You have lost them. So when you are maturing, you learn to pick up your fights. There are some things where you are not needed. And as we grow in this uh, uh, journey, there are pains that grow with it. It's just like a baby when they grow. There are certain things that happen that bring pain to the parents and to the child as well. Growth is not smooth sailing. If growth was smooth sailing, there will be no bickering, there will be no gossiping, there will be no hurting each other, there will be no backbiting, there will be no backstabbing. But growth comes with pain. And we must be able to endure this pain. There are things that will be thrown at you. That will be pleasant. There will be some things that will be unpleasant. If you are a person that desires to grow, you will relax. And you will grow. You will be able to just brush off some things like water over a dark speck. 
Amen. Amen. There are some things you must engage yourself. Some things you must just. Kule zinye zinto wena ogu melu genegi zo. Kule zinye zinto melu te ai. Look at school one. Akulu mkutu lu shut up. It's okay. Amen. There's sometimes that you just need to keep quiet. Amen. You know, talking about growth pains. I remember one brother once came and he was sharing and his name was Oel. And he says, you know, birth comes with pain. <laughs> Have you ever gone to a hospital and you met a, um, a lady that just says, Oh, I've just given birth. I've been to those wards. You see all sorts of kind of walk. Others want to climb a wall. Others take off all their clothes. They could not be bothered who is close to them. So you think that is fun games. The person is in pain. That's why a husband always must stay Because you'll be scratched and all manner of things will happen to you. Because this person is going through pain. They don't just, ah, oh, I've given faith. Oh. oh, it's nice. It's a boy. It's a girl. But birth comes with pain. It's different for others. They see, they, or rather, the, 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 the vericity of the pain is different from one lady to another. But still, there is pain. And when you remember that pain, straight after that, the ladies will be, I oh, know that's the last hour. And then there's four or five more after. Why? There's, there's an, a, a, a thing, a, a hormone that is produced after birth. And they forget about the pain. Spiritual, there is also a hormone that comes. And you forget the pain that you have gone through. Spiritual, that hormone is released after you have gone through that pain. And you say, it is well. It is well with my soul. It doesn't matter what it is that I have gone through. But it is well with my soul. The Lord has taken care of my head. The the Lord has taken care of what I've gone through. For those that do not have enemies, please raise your left hand. Whether you do right or you do evil, you will always have an enemy. Whether you love or you hate, they will always love and hate you as well. I said to somebody yesterday, I try and find. Please remember, we are preaching to each other, so it's not like. I try to think who I hate in my life. And I fail to come with an answer. Even if I want to be loved, <laughs> there are some who cannot stand my guts. Just as you are walking, they are like, could not stand me walking. I have not done anything. It's the same for you as well. Whether you have given away a lot of things and you think, ah, I think I'm okay. I've given to poor people. Oh, and I've given to those even that have. There is still someone who hates you like that. We are just sharing. Amen and teaching. Amen. Amen. So in the natural, child is dependent on the mother. Milk is then required to nurture the body. They graduate to solids. And they are having meat. Then you meet them at Chisanyama eating bones. They become stronger and stronger. In the natural. 
And it is the same in the spiritual. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2, a scripture that we all know. It says, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that we may grow thereby. Amen. Amen. How do we grow as children of God? First, desire the sincere milk of the word of God. So let us go into the elementary things that we were taught. Because they build the basis of our spiritual growth. Amen. So when you are being taught from the pulpit, week in, week out, it's maturing us from the spiritual milk to the spiritual meat to the spiritual bones. Do you remember those uh, sons of Skiva? Said, ah, oh, we get out, Puma, when a Satan. But he went out in the name of Jesus, back to send. And the, and the demon said, Paul, I know. If they were colored, they would have been, who the heck are you? <laughs> so, and they got a thrashing because they did not understand how to cast out a demon. They did not understand that you need to be grown yourself. Be careful when you cast out demons. Because they will embarrass you. <laughs> they will tell you about yesterday. Remember, these are, these are familiar spirits. Eh? So they will, know, they will know things about you. So be careful. But if you are a grown person, spiritual, ah, it doesn't matter. You will cast any demon. Amen. Amen. We also need to grow in these things. Amen. Amen. Casting of demons is not for the pastors. It's for each and every one of us. We are all empowered to do what God can do in our lives. Children of God need to learn that the same power which was upon Jesus is upon us. The same ability that Jesus had is the same ability that we have. So we must desire the sincere milk of the word of God. Pastor, why are you mentioning all these elementary things? It's because we must remind each other. Sometimes we go a bit ahead of ourselves. And we want people to do certain things. And we forget to point each other on the basics of our, of our teaching. Like I said, this is part of our growth strategy in church. We want to teach the fundamentals of faith. Amen. The Bible says, desire all scripture. Okay, so you start taking a variety of, of spiritual food. Uh, um, Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Colossians 3, verse 16. It says, let the word of God richly dwell in you. In all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Amen. Amen. The word of God needs to grow. And when the word of God grows in you, there is such a, how can I put it, there is such an anointing that goes with it. The word of God does not go on its own, but it also goes with the anointing. Amen. So you feel this power to begin to declare the word of God. The other scriptures you can look at is 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16, Job chapter 23 verse 12. Amen. So you desire meat. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12 up to 14. I will read. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. 
But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Amen. Amen. So when we grow in the word of God, <inaudible> we are able to see these things and be sensitized in <inaudible> this <inaudible> So through uh, the, 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 the teaching of the word of God, <inaudible> we experience these things that empower us. <inaudible> the Bible is simple. It says, by this time, we, sh we shouldn't be going back to those <laughs> elements. You know, sometimes we look at ourselves as Christians. There are some people you don't expect certain behavior because of their exercise in the spirit. Amen. Because of their growth in the Lord. Amen. Can you imagine Uncle Victor coming and telling me of unlike himself. I know, it's, I know because of the maturity that he esteemed, there are certain things that he will not say. So, we also need to grow as well and be able to reach a certain area where they will say, no, such things must not be heard of in our, in our lives. Fornication, whatever, uh, lying. You know, it must never be heard in our midst. That is a, because people have matured. People have matured. So that's why they are able to be in that. Amen. Amen. There are certain things that we should be talking about in our midst and encouraging each other. You know, one of the things that this church has grown in the past six months is the part of of prayer. That one we can attest that many people suddenly are hungry to pray. If you are lagging behind, it's because it's your choice. But the platform has been set for you to be able to pray. So we want everyone to come on board. Amen. Uh, on the 12th of July, the devotion from Dr. Ken Haskins. One of the things he said, he says, God never gives too much to bear, which we cannot carry in our growth. He gives us what we are able to carry. So it's not like God comes and forces this heavy load. No, no, no. God sees your growth trajectory and knows that now they can, He can trust you with this. He can trust you with this. You know, there are some people you can never trust with basic information. Basic, basic information. Because you'll hear it from the mountain top. Basic information. God help us to grow. Yet there are others that you know if I go and say this to that person, I know it's intact. I know I won't be laughed at and not know why people are laughing at me. But it's been watered all over. So God knows to give us weights, weights, weights. It's like a gym. Sorry, it's like the guys that go to gym. You can carry hundred. Bench, bench 100 kgs, 50 kgs, 50 kgs, and then by the time you hit 150, you have amassed the muscle that is able to carry that. I'll, I'll tell you a funny story that once happened. They, they had opened a new gym in town. And and all the people would go there. Others would just go there because they wanted to show off their Nike and stuff. So I was carrying weights with this guy called uh, Temba Hualima. So 
You know, by the time you were hitting 200, you could only maybe do three, four, five and leave them there. Because you'll hurt or best your muscles. So three, four, five, we leave and then the next person comes. So there were these ladies that were coming around. I know, I'm sure they didn't trust in gym related. Although they were wearing gym kids. So I was down on my third, I think. And I was obviously about to leave because that's uh, 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 200 kgs. And this Temba guy says, Loudly for everyone to hear. 69, come on, Dave. Come on. 70, come on. Give me another two. And of course, you know, there were these people standing in awe. <laughs> Seeing this uh, uh, muscle man. But you know, you grow into okay, your gym. You are able to carry the 20. And you graduate. So that's what we need to be doing. God will entrust us with what we can carry. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, there are some places that me and you need to grow as well. In the morning, we are admonished about growing in repentance. So, each and every day, you know, repentance is not like one day, it's over. We are repenting each and every day. So, that's an area of way of growth. Amen. We need to be repenting each and every day. Because tomorrow has got its own issues. Tomorrow has got its own challenges. So, I need to be able to repent each and every day. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, that's a very good area where you can also say, Lord, help. Help me. I repent because I've done this. And then we grow in the Lord. Another area we don't want to talk about is the area of giving. Then the church went quiet. <laughs> giving is a growth. You know, the Bible says in the olden days they gave until the priests were like, ah, ah, eh, maho, eh, maho. Don't you think one day it would also be nice <laughs> to give and then we say, no, no, no. We have given enough for the ceiling that we want to do. We have given enough with that we are going to even give to the less privilege from this amount of money. You know, we need to grow in our giving. You know, the people that are around us need to know that we are givers. Jesus gave his life God gave us his son so that we may also do the same. We need to grow in our giving. Amen. We need to grow in the word of God. I've already mentioned this. We need to grow in our fellowship one with another. We need to grow the way we feel for one another. We need to grow in our relationships. We must grow from these superfluous relationships. That today I am your friend, tomorrow I'm not your friend. Today I can trust you with my information, but tomorrow I cannot trust you. Those are some of the things that we need to be aware of. Amen. Amen. I'm going to close. But there were some scriptures that I wanted to to talk about. So don't jump your growth stage. Each and every stage is very important. So allow God to take you through those growth stages. Be able to train your spirit man. Your spirit man needs to grow. Make sure that you can grow in the way that God has called you to. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm trying to talk to Moose. 
Hallelujah. Amen. So make sure that your spirit man is growing. Nature your spirit man. Feed your spirit man with the word of God. Feed your spirit man with prayer. Make sure that the word of God richly dwells in you. That way when you start feeding the spiritual man, it goes on, it goes on. What are some of the benefits of growth? You stop being petty. You, you, you start loving God's people. You start caring for God's people. You become tolerant towards God's people. You are maturing. Amen. You are a disciple. You are willing to, uh, to, to witness freely. Growth leads us to fruitfulness, ladies and gentlemen. Growth brings fruit. Amen. Unless there is growth, there is no fruit that are going to come. Unless you have grown, people will not enjoy what you bring to life. Amen. So my, my admonition this morning is that never settle for less. Never settle for less. Never settle for less. There is more that is in front than that is behind you. There is more that God has set for you than that which is behind you. God has got great things. The plans that God has for you, plans of good, plans to prosper you, plans to make you a household name, plans to make you someone which your neighbors can look at and envy you and want you. So never settle for less, child of God. Never settle for less. You are not a midget in the spirit. You are a giant in the presence of God. People are afraid of you because you will not settle for less. You will aim for the higher things. You will not aim for the lower things. The Bible says let your thoughts, let your ideas be above and not beneath. God loves you, child of God. So don't look down upon yourself. Make sure that as you grow, as you allow yourself to grow, God is at work in your life. God will make you one. God will make you a victor. God will not make you a midget. God will raise you. God raises the poor from the dust. He will raise you from the dust. So never settle for less, child of God. You are not worth $10. You are not just worth twenty dollars. You are worth far much higher than that. If Jesus died for you, if Jesus shed His blood on the cross for your life, you are more important. Don't allow other people to, to look down upon you. God is not done with you. Never settle for less, child of God. You are more important in the kingdom of God. Never settle for less. Never settle for the crumbs. Even the prodigal son came to his senses. Come to your senses, child of God. And do not settle for less. He said in my father's house, even the servants are eating well. You are a child of God. You need to eat well. You need to be nourished. You need to be high up there. Hallelujah. You don't belong on the lower lands. Hallelujah. You must not walk with your shoulders down because you are important. You are an ambassador of the kingdom of God. You are the ambassador of God from on high. God is looking at you. God is looking at you and expecting you to bring fruit. That's why he says in Psalms, occupy till I come. The person who's taking care of God's duty here on earth is you and I, the person who is representing God is you and I. So if I'm representing God, I don't walk with a defeated face. I don't walk with dejection. I don't walk as a hopeless person. I walk knowing that God, who is great, is in me. Him that causes me to triumph each and every day. I'm not a wimp. 
I'm not one that is looked down upon. If you look down upon me, shame on you, sorry on you, because I'm on a trajectory. I'm on a walk up with my God, and God does not do half favors. God does not do half bad stuff. I'm a full product. God does not do half bad properties. I'm a full product. I'm a full product. So don't allow anyone to look down upon you. Never settle for less child of God. There is more that is God in store for you. There is more that God has set for you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He sets a table in the presence of my enemies. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what they think of you. You are a victor. You are a victor, child of God. You are above and not beneath. Hallelujah. You are not the tailor. Hallelujah. You are prosper where you go. Your $10 that you put, your $10 that you invest, God will prosper it. God will prosper it. The visits that you make to other people, to encourage other people, God is looking at that and is prospering that. Hallelujah. The prayers that you have done for the church, the prayers that you have done for other people. God will enrich them. God is not an unjust person. God is not an unjust person. He will repay you, child of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has no squelch with anyone. God does not owe anyone anything, but he gives liberally to us. Hallelujah. So it's you and I that are entrusted that after we are grown, we become fruitful. Hallelujah. Amen. Do not look down upon yourself. Do not less settle for less. Because you are a child of God. You represent royalty here. Hallelujah. You represent royalty here. You represent royalty here. Hallelujah. Amen. It doesn't matter what has happened in your life. It doesn't matter how many mistakes the blood of Jesus has taken care of that. It doesn't matter how many times you have sinned. It doesn't matter how many times you have fallen. But God raises you from that fallen state into what he wants you to become. So never circle for less, child of God. Do not circle for less. Do not circle for less. You see, kings and queens, they walk with their poise. They don't walk like this. No, no, no. Kings and queens, they walk with their poise. They walk with such majesty. They walk with such dignity. They walk with assurance. They know. They know who they are. They know that you are their subject. So you must also be declaring and decreeing that these are my subjects. The enemy is your subject, child of God. Hallelujah. Don't look down upon yourself. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar person that you must show forth the praises of him who has brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You walk in the light. You walk in the light, child of God. You walk in the child in the light. Royalty does not look down upon itself. Most of the time, kings and queens look at that level. They have no business being there. There are servants who are coming to clean up below them. There is someone who is coming to clean up after you. Hallelujah. You need to concentrate on the things that are above. Because you are blessed. Because you are blessed. And you are acceptable in the beloved. We will love you in this house. We will care for you in this house. We will pray for you. Because you are important. Never settle for less, child. Never settle for less. It's all about God. It's all about God. He who has planned 
Hewett Bethel will see you in you in prosperity. Will prosper your ways. God will prosper your ways. God will prosper your ways. So never settle for less. Ah, don't say, my time is gone. Ah, come marry me. Ah, anyone, anyone. Ah, my time is gone. Ah, my time is gone. No, settle for the good that God has anointed for you, that God has appointed for you. Do not settle for, ne- for less. When everybody else is settling for less, go and get the better. Because the better and the best is for you. The better and the best is for you. God has ordained those things for you. God has not ordained you to be a loser. God did not create David to be a, a, a loser. That's why David said, I have been young in Psalm chapter 37. Now I am older. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. No, you see bad in bread. You will not beg for bad child of God. As long as you met Jesus in your life, as long as God is your God, you will not beg. As long as you make him your God, you will not lose anything. God is good. God is good. Never settle for less child of God. Never settle for less child of God. Ah, I'm tired. I'm angry, actually. No, you are a child of God. You are a child of God. You need to remind yourself that you are a child of God. That you are a child of God. Hallelujah. A child of God does not deserve to suffer. A child of God does not deserve to let. Hallelujah. Amen. They better come and borrow from you. They better come and ask of you because you are a child of God. Plenty belongs to God. Plenty belongs to God. So never settle for less than child of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I personally refuse. I personally refuse. Mediocrity is not my portion. Mediocrity is not my portion. Mediocrity is not my portion. Child of God, rise up in holy anger. Face your giant. Speak to your giant. Because you must never circle for this. Ah. Ah. No ways. You'll never settle for less. Anything that you put your mind on, it will prosper. Anything that you put your heart to, it will prosper. You will never lack. You will never lose sleep. Hallelujah. There are some people, they might have so much money, but they will not sleep. You will sleep, child of God. You will sleep, child of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Ah, I keep having these dreams. I keep seeing people fighting me. No, child of God, you will not see that. You will see angels ministering to you. Never settle for less. Never settle for less. Our God is good. My God is good. He can lift you up from where you are. God is no respecter of people. God doesn't care whether you are a pastor or you are an elder or you are a player or who you are. God loves us equally. But it's only according to my faith. Let it be according to my faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God's people must not be dying at a young age. God's people must be dying at a ripe age. Hallelujah. People must be old and live for God. Yes, this is a ripe age. Live and give testimony of what God can do in your life. Tell them, Mokoko, that when we were young, God was good to us. God has been good to us now. He has given us good health. None of our grannies will suffer sickness because God is good. Because God cares for them. Because God cares for them. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Never circle for less, child of God. Don't circle for less. Don't circle for less. Only don't circle for less. Don't circle for less. Don't circle for less. Don't circle for less. less. I'm 
sure God sometimes gets hurt. Because we want to pick up the crumbs. No, 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 no. no. Lazarus was the one that picked up the crumbs. But he was promoted quickly. Ah, so God promotes us quickly. If you have been picking up crumbs, rise up. Go and have a sumptuous meal. He says he prepares a good table. Come dine with the Lord. Hallelujah. Come dine with the Lord. Come dine with the Lord. Come dine with the Lord. And never circle for less. Let us stand to our feet, but never circle for less. Never circle for less, child of God. Never circle for less. Never circle for less. In whatever you do, in whatever you do, you are number one. In whatever you do, you are at the top. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord show his mercy on you. The Lord makes you victorious. The Lord makes you victorious, Anna. The Lord makes you victorious, Marcel. The Lord makes you victorious, lady. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord make us conquer whatever obstacle that we face. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If for some reason you have a need and you want to be prayed for, the message was not for the altar call. The message was just to encourage us and to lift us up. But if you feel you want to be prayed for, just come as we worship. Just come and there are pastors, they will pray for you. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Let us worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's in you, Lord. Hallelujah. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. I'm in you. 